What is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to Fall of Fans, with me and my co-host Ben. And it was a cruel defeat for Costa Rica as they tumbled out on penalties yesterday. We'll be reviewing that, as well as the Argentina game as Higuain's early strike settled the game. And then, we're going to get on to the Twitter question of the day. So let's get straight into this. It's me, Ben, and my co-host, Jack. How are you doing, Jack? I'm good, thank you, Ben. How are you doing on this fine Sunday? It's raining, isn't it? It is raining. It's been chucking it down. We're actually recording later than usual, because I live in a roof conversion. All the windows are built into the roof, and whenever it rains, it sounds like I'm cooking <gasps> popcorn. Do you know what we could call? If you ever do a series, like a vlog series, you know what you can call it? What? Jack in the Attic. My word. Excellent. Uh, shall we crack on then? There was, we we bigged up yesterday's games again. There were a total of one goal between the two games in normal time. Uh, but they weren't without incident, were they, Jack? They were not. Particularly one game where I got the prediction right for after 90 minutes. I was quite, then we'll, uh, quite happy we'll, with that. We did, actually. You're right. We'll go, we'll, we will come to that game later. We will far, first start, far start with, uh, first start with Argentina 1, Belgium 0. The Belgians, as I predicted, Jack... They, it was a te- it was a step too far, wasn't it? They really have disappointed me this World Cup. Is I, that because of expectation, or is that because they just haven't been very good? I think it's a combination of both. It just looked to me like there was no cohesion in their team going forward. Like I know Lukaku has been put under the spotlight for his poor attacking movement. There's a lot of other players who could be thrown into the exact same category. I just feel like because he's the lone striker, he kind of has a bigger spotlight thrust on him when he doesn't score because you know you expect that player to score mm. but I think the likes of Hazard Morales I know started yesterday <laughs> they just didn't impress me and no. they, that's a common theme through the World Cup I felt as if for Belgium they have Witzel and Fellaini in the middle oh, and neither of those neither of those players is particularly creative so they were relying on De Bruyne the issue is he, when he doesn't turn up they then look at Hazard and Morales as a sort of kind of creativity and it just as a general rule of thumb, when you've got players like Vertonghen playing left back, he's not a very good left wing back. He's not going to offer that extra pass for the wide man. And so, essentially, your creative wide players have only got a few inside passes to look to. Yeah, it was. I, I made the points on Twitter that I thought that there was a certain midfielder for Belgium who was playing because he plays for Manchester United and not because he's the best option for that team. Um, it, it, he's the sort. Of, I'm talking about Fellaini. I think Dembele suits the way that Belgium play far better. Fellaini, to me, is the kind of guy you look to on 80 minutes when you're desperate for that goal because he's not bad at playing the long ball game, holding it up and giving it. Uh, whereas for the rest of the game, he does 10-yard passes. And a lot of the time with Fellaini, and this, this was infuriating me more than anything, he'll play it short to someone, dart into the box and look for that long ball. And Belgium, to me, are so much better than that kind of football. I'm not. I'm not saying it's like this ancient art of long ball, but like they don't need to do it. They've, they've, in their squad are a lot of talented technical players, and they've just as you point out, they've not really shown up, and they're they're relying on players to do something. And it's the first time for me that Wilmot has come on stuck. Like we, we've spoken before, is it genius that he's bringing on these uh, substitutes, or has he been incredibly lucky? And based on the Argentina game, it, it feels as if he was incredibly lucky, especially with the late goals as well. They never scored before the 70th minute. And that, that worries me. It's a team that comes into a competition, given their group, given the situation, I wanted Belgium to turn up. And it was kind of, this was the game where you have to turn up. It's the knockout stage. You can't afford not to turn up for 30 minutes because it's going to mm. cost you. And it did cost Belgium. You know, the goal that they conceded, it was a nice finish by Higuain, but it came from the Belgium centre-back trying to run it out from the back. Yeah, well, it was company, wasn't it? Company came out. Uh, I think he played the ball forward. I think, yeah, I think he played the ball forward and they lost it. And then all of a sudden, Messi's running at you. He's got Di Maria one side, Lovetsy another, Higuain in front of him. The ball falls very nicely to Higuain, but the finish is marvellous. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a great hit. It was a really good finish. And the, the thing I loved about that goal by Higuain was it was just so instinctive. If you've ever doubted his ability as a striker, you just had to look at that goal because he knows where the goal is. The, the pass to him takes a deflection and he still knows where he needs to hit it. Yeah, and he's really- not like like Higuain's not had a sparkling tournament, but we're talking about Belgium. And we're saying that some of their big players haven't stepped up when it was most important, and that's one moment in that game in which Messi's not not had the best game of his life. Neither neither Di Maria obviously went off injured, and Higuain stepped up. He knows he has to, and he scored what has been the decisive winning goal. Um, 
And that, that's arguably been the difference between this Argentine team and the Belgium side. Company really disappointed me yesterday, particularly kind of in the first 20 minutes, he completed 7 of 11 passes. And when you're playing against a team like Argentina, you cannot afford for your defenders to be giving it away. The, the defensive area of Argentina, I know I mentioned it briefly yesterday, but Mascarano was so good at recycling the pay, yeah. play for them. And he even... Un- rather uncharacteristic for Xavier Mascarano, picked out a few incredible passes. I think his passing like is a very underrated part of his game. I think it's always been as lucky. Just he's always been around players who have got better passing ability. When he was at Liverpool, he had Gerard or Alonso to give it to, and obviously when he's at Barcelona, he's got a whole host of people that he could give it to. And Barcelona aren't the kind of team to play those stunning kind of fifty-yard balls anyway, so he can't show that off. But yeah. For the Argentine team, he's got two very pacey wingers on either side, and he's got that ability to pick a ball either over the top or out wide. See, one thing that really worried me for me was that we mentioned before, you know, obviously Belgium went down early on, and there was a real emphasis, you know, they've got to turn it around in this first, you know, this next half. Of seven crosses from open play, only one actually found a man in the box. Yeah, well, I'm I'm looking at a few stats here as well. There were only in the whole game there were three shots on target. Argentina had two, and Belgium had one, and that is just like. For a World Cup quarter-final, that's not enough. But for two teams that need to get through to a semi-final, like a World Cup semi-final, yeah. that's a big deal. For, for Belgium not to do a little bit more, they had six shots off target, but like the Argentine defence isn't known for being like, coming into this World Cup, that was their weak point. Everyone was like, well, if you're going to beat Argentina, you're going to beat their defence. Yeah. And Belgium, with quite a lot of creative attacking talent, have failed to do so. And they're the kind of team you finally thought. Well, like, if you thought Belgium were going to win, you must have thought, well, look, look at that Argentine defence. We can, we can do them. They're not that good. And Argentina just showed a bit more class. Well, Mascarano's pass completion in the first half um, was like ninety six point five percent. Yeah, which is just surprising. incredible. Like he was knocking the ball around well, and I feel like the Argentine defence has really come under some scrutiny. Um, yeah. But I feel like Max Garano has kind of almost saved them in, in many ways. I know Di Michaelis came in today, which I thought was a little bit of an odd one. I wasn't mm. sure if they... I mean, is there a reason to bring him in when you know that his defensive kind of centre-back partners on the other side of the pitch? Is it that um, man-for-man thing? Or was it just a case of that, that stick Di Michaelis alongside Garay and see how we go? I, I think it was a case of... We said we said it yesterday that we thought that... Well, I, I certainly said it. I'm not sure if you agreed or not, to be honest, but... I thought Belgium would come unstuck because they've not been here before. Someone like Di Michaelis has been here before. He he knows he knows this level of international football. And while he's not had the, the most sparkling season in the Premier League, he still won the league with Manchester City, and he's had a, he's had a good year. So to bring him in, confidence with, with him must be pretty high. He's had a haircut. He's looking pretty snazzy. For a while, people didn't realise who it was. That might that may have been part of his plan. Just to be like, well, they're going to recognise me as Dimicalis. I best get a haircut. Yeah, uh, which is which is clever play from the from the off. Dimicalis has won the mind games. We'll talk about some mind games later. Um, but yeah, Belgium's so called generation, golden generation, even have just kind of fizzled out, and it makes you wonder how easy was their group. They didn't really ever perform. I mean, that like you expect them to gel. They they were a team. They were a team who going into it, you'd look at their team and go, that is a team that's very well balanced. They've got players at every position. Like man for man against most teams in the world, they have a player better than the other team. Mm. And it just really didn't show. Um, they only scored three goals in their five games this World Cup. I, I feel like Wilmots has been undone. I just I just don't think he's he's as clever or as pragmatic as we thought he was. I think he's just got a little bit lucky with these substitutions. Not that... He's brought them on to change games, just that the fact they've made an impact, and all of a sudden he looks like this clever manager who's getting his way through games. And we're, like I was giving them quite a lot of credit as well. I was saying that I thought they were winning, not convincingly, but they were doing the job. And now it feels like it was all for nothing because yeah. they've got to this point. And I'm sure Belgium as a country will be delighted with a quarterfinal finish and to go out against Argentina is no disgrace. But I still feel like they would have wanted a little bit more. I think a lot of people would tip them to do better than they have. Uh, to do better than they have. I thought um, I, I, I don't know. I, I I thought they'd come semi final would be the absolute max and quarterfinals was quite likely. Yeah. But you know, you never know, do you? I'd put it this way: if I was them, I wouldn't be that disappointed disappointed with reaching the quarterfinals. I kind of feel like because I don't know, we we kind of sit from a different perspective, perhaps to Belgium's, we're more disappointed because we almost expect more for them. 
I yeah, feel like that might be the same with England in many ways. Yeah, of course. If you are from Belgium and you're you're a fan of the podcast, please let us know on Twitter. I was I was asking yesterday about what people thought in Germany um, on my own Twitter account to see what people thought about well how the press are reacting and how the public are reacting. Because for me now, Germany are fan favourites for this tournament, and I wanted to know. So, like I say, if you're from Belgium, uh, get in touch on the YouTube on the Twitter. Let us know how, like how you're as a nation how you're kind of accepting it. Are you kind of fine with it, or do you feel like you could have done a bit more? L- let us know. I'm interested. Um, we'll probably talk about it on future shows as well. Just one last fact before we go into the next game. Seen as Higuain was the only player who scored yesterday, his uh, strike actually ended a run of 528 minutes without a goal for Argentina. Wow. But with that goal, uh, it was his fifth World Cup goal in nine games compared to Messi, who also has five goals but in 13. Well, yeah, it, it's it's nice to see Argentina capable of beating a side without Messi having the biggest impact. I think that'll be very pleasing for Argentina. He did get an assist, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, but... Well, it was kind of an assist. It was like a deflected assist. He'll get it because but... FIFA are corrupt. <laughs> I get it. He's in my he's in my fantasy team. Um, but yeah, I, I think Argentina will be really pleased with that win. I think they they may have seen Belgium as quite the threat. And um, obviously, they've got quite a lot of Premier League players that are known to a lot of people, a lot of play, players that play in Europe. So I, I think Argentina will be pleased to have got out of that game. And I think they'll I, honestly, I think they'll fancy themselves against the Dutch. Yeah. Um, and we'll go on to the Dutch right now. That's what a link. What a link. Uh, the Netherlands played Costa Rica. We thought this may be one of the most high score. You thought you definitely thought it would be. And I was kind of... I I was s- with- well, I said 0-0 nil nil at, f- at full-time, 6-0 after extra time. And I've got to be honest, given how the Dutch performed 10 minutes before full-time, I thought I was on for a winner there. I was thinking, bet fair, will you give me a bet on it? One of the one of the followers on the Twitters there, like, I've tried to put 6-0 as a bet in extra time, but they won't let me have it. <laughs> well, unsurprisingly. Um... We'll get we'll get on to the main moments, but let's talk about the game in, in, as a whole. I thought Costa Rica defended really, really well. Navas again in goal was the standout man. Um, yeah. What, what like people? They were spoken about before the game. They had a bit of a knock. Not that you could tell. Flipping it, eh? some of the saves he was making, he was all over the place. He did go down a few times, but I feel like that was just a little bit of sneaky time wasting. Yeah. No, I, there was there was like a moment where I thought. You're probably all right there, but you're trying to get your team a little bit of a respite, uh, which is fair enough. Like it's a bit of, you know, bit yeah. Of you're in extra time. You you've you're pretty tired. Yeah, I thought um, I, I I was really disappointed with this game because I almost wanted if a goal had come early on, I think it would have opened it up a lot more. And by yeah. the end of the game, it was opened up three players being tired. But kind of in the first ten minutes, I can't recall a shot. No, it was interesting that um, Costa Rica took Joel Campbell off as early as they did. Like, I, I wasn't that surprised because he played 120 minutes in the previous game against Greece and looked absolutely dead on his feet, yeah. even more than Brian Ruiz, who finished the game and actually was running a little bit in that game. Uh, that may have been because the Dutch had far more of the ball, so Costa Rica weren't having to run up and down as much. They were kind of just sitting, and that probably gave them a little bit more of an advantage in extra time. I don't know if you yeah. are for that. Um, but yeah, obviously, was it Urena came on? Yeah, for Campbell, and he looked, he was quite sprightly actually. Like I was, I was a little bit surprised at how kind of capable he was. He held the ball up nicely for Costa Rica, and it gave them an outlet, uh, which Campbell's kind of in behind tactics only work if he gets on the ball, and he wasn't really involved all that much. No, I agree with that. Um, for me, Costa Rica, they 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 really impressed me going into mm. this game. As much as I'd said nil nil jokingly, just because it was the pattern of the World Cup, I don't think anyone really backed them at all. And they were so resilient. They kind of lined up in a 5-4-2. And um, they impressed me. And Rob Ben had a lot of space. And they definitely rode their luck. But it was a really inspirational performance. And I- I'm going to cut right to extra time. Because let's be honest. There wasn't that much to talk about in the main I time. Did, bef- I've, besides I've, I've the crossbar thing, hits. I've only one thing to talk about. In regards to the game. And I thought, with it. I thought Van Persie should have gone off on, on 70. And the Dutch may have been able to nick the game. Bringing Hunter Lauren at that point. Um, I, I thought Van Persie was just ineffective against the Costa Rican defence, which is surprising. I, we were right, by the way, when we said we thought Depe, we, we thought they'd play three up top. Yeah. And we, we thought Depe might play, and he did. Well, the Dutch were very slow. They were very patient mm. and probing, but by the second half, you kind of, you need to be more than that against a team like Costa Rica. And they kind of did start to do that right towards the end. Um I think Holland ended up having four shots on target in the first half. My favourite stat of all is the fact that Bruno's Martins Indy had a 98.2% pass completion in the first half. He's He looks scary, doesn't he? He does. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Well, you'd hope he knows what he's doing, but he looks... <laughs> I wouldn't like to play him. 
He'd he scare me. I wouldn't go near him. I'd feel some of his some of his teammates. Like there was a moment when he gave Cal the eyes. Like yeah. and if you've seen man's in these eyes you'll know that cow was just like uh, uh, it was when there was a free kick they're defending a free kick and he just gave him a look and i was like oh god cow's gonna cow, cow's gonna die here. this is gonna be awful see my big gripe with the way that holland approached this I, i'm looking at some heat maps and stuff just to make sure i'm not talking out my ass i'm not <laughs> was the fact like that, you. that um a lot of their build-up play came from out wide but they had very little success kind of at the edge of the 18 yard box deep playing balls through in that area they kind of i know that you've got robin out wide but there were times where you just wanted them to tuck inside and maybe try and exploit costa rica down the middle i know costa rica were very compact but you were looking for one of the central midfielders just to carry the ball up the field and try and kind of pull a few costa ricans out of position instead of mm. what ended up happening a lot of the game which was a case of right let's kick it out to the left or out to the right and kind of um you know let robin work his magic and whipping the ball yeah, we should mention that uh, it's the first time I've seen Schneider play that well in a Dutch shirt for about four years. Uh, I'm not going to claim to watching them all the time, but I've occasionally seen a friendly that they've been in, and it's the first time I've really seen him put a stamp on the game. He, he has some terrific shots which hit the woodwork. Yeah, um, and we shouldn't forget about those. So obviously, the Dutch were creating; they just weren't like I wanted you'd to see. I want the Costa Rican side to be beaten by this Dutch side. I wanted to see Schneider really run at the defense at times. He's not. He's not got that in his game anymore, though. I think that's part of the issue. He kind of lets Depay and Robin do it. Yeah. And and it's not really Schneider's game is doing exactly what happened yesterday where he gets it from deep plays it wide and then kind of jogs forward and then is in space for a shot and he had a few of those yeah um, but obviously it went to went to extra time and at that point they t- they did actually bring Huntelaar on but they kept RVP on the pitch I believe Indy Martin uh, Martin's Indy came off the Dutch went to four at the back with Cal playing right back uh, and then Huntelaar played up top with Van Persie didn't really work and um, they were kind of in each other's space quite a lot of the time. I found that there was one moment in particular where they both ran to the back post and it looked as if they'd never played together and it was a little bit bizarre. Uh, but obviously nothing happened in the extra time. So we went to penalties and just before the penalties happened, Jack, Tim Krull was warming up on the sideline. It was very bizarre. Like, you don't... It's a football manager-esque thing, isn't it? Subbing your keeper off for the penalties. Well, I, we played FIFA just a minute ago and I did it to you. I know. And it well, worked. Krill is very quick and I think the thing that makes him so good for penalties is his agility. If you watch the penalties back, he was trying some mind games in terms of going, you know, what, you know, walk, doing a weird run-up or kind of pre thing as the player placed down the ball where he'd kind of come from one side of the goal and then they'd be like, you know, he'd come from the right almost, which made the player go to the left or vice versa. But the thing that really impressed me about Krill is just his agility. Hmm. his ability to get into the lower corners of the goal very quickly and he did indeed watch a lot of the penalties actually get kicked it wasn't a case of him guessing beforehand and I mean we talked about the Netherlands goalkeeper scenario before the tournament even began they have a lot of very good goalkeepers and Krull is just one of those do you think they have a lot of good goalkeepers because I'm not sure I agree with that I think relative to other nations they do which nations are we talking about a lot of the other major ones. You look at teams like. It's so a look at the other teams who were in the quarterfinals. Germany, who's you know I they. Think, I think Germany, Germany, are, Germany have got a better goalkeeping selection than than the Dutch. Do you reckon? Neuer, yeah, Neuer, Weiss, Werder, 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 whatever he's called. Uh, so yeah, we've also got the guy that Barca have just signed. Stegen. Stegen. Well, okay, then what other teams? You have got France. I'd argue they have better keepers than the French. I'd argue they have better oh, keepers than the Brazilians. Ooh, I'm not sure I agree with that or that. Sillerson, Vorm and Krull, I'd argue. I mean, who I, is... I think the... Je- Jefferson, uh, Julio Cesar, and I'm not sure who the third is for Brazil. And then on the... Who's the other team you mentioned, sorry? France. France. Have, got... if, they, if they wanted to, they've got players like Rufia or Mandana or they've got Loris. I don't know. I, I, think... I don't feel like they're as good because I, I was personal opinion more than anything. I just think that the Dutch have a better selection of goalkeepers to choose from. More evenly matched, certainly. There is do less of a standout number one. Got, do you think they've got a better selection than the Belgians? Because um, I don't. I don't think they do. Well, I don't know. Mignolet, Courtois, and I don't know who the third is. No, but I, but you're only going to use two. So let's take each nation's top two. Obviously. Oh no, I was talking about all three for the sake of the subs and the squad. The, my I, point. I, my I, point I, is that I, I the nations with better keepers. Oh, I disagree, but it's opinion. Uh, I, I just, <laughs> it is. I, I think for me they're more evenly matched. I think there's less of a stand at number one. Citizen Vorm and Krull all have caps. Citizen's kind of emerged as a number one, but um, obviously there is some faith 
in the Dutch camp for Krul when it comes to penalties. Okay, you're, you're in. You're inclined to that opinion. You're like you're allowed it. I just think there's other keepers in the world. Um, <laughs> that's such a nonsensical sentence. Anyway, as you rightly point out, Krul came on. Uh, gutsy by Van Hal. Did you like what Krul was doing? Did, were you a fan of it? I'm not really against it. I would have preferred it if he'd gone for a more Jersey dude, like an Istanbul esque kind of dance <laughs> in front of the players. But yeah. besides that, no, I, I I think it's a mind game penalties, and if you can do something to get your team a win, and you're not going to be penalised for it. Frankly, I I think it's bloody excellent, and I love it every like because every, as a keeper, well, like, I used to play goal a little bit, and as soon as I like it would come to penalties or even if it's just a penalty in the game first thing I'd do which you're not allowed to do actually at World Cups in penalty shootouts I'd grab the ball I'd spin it up to him and it'd come back so then when he puts it on the spot I stand off my line so that when he looks up I look bigger and Krul was doing that every time as well and he was giving a little bit of shit talk to him sorry Mrs Jack giving a bit of shit talk to him I was thinking oh, I love that see I'll tell you what will make penalties more exciting if the keeper is allowed to pull out a box like he gets a designated box and he's allowed to have little distractions in it and he can what, pull out I, little props to put off the player as he runs like up. Like juggling, juggling and stuff. He can like do that. juggling, water pistol. Yeah, water pistol. What else could he do? Diablo. Yeah. Just a juggle, whole box juggle of circus fire. Tricks. Well, it doesn't even have to be circus tricks. Skipping. Getting fireworks. Catherine wheel. Catherine wheel. I'm not sure that sounds dangerous though, yeah, especially in South America. They they, they allow flares. Nothing. Wrong. I don't know sure they allow flares. I think they're unable to stop flares. Well, they're unable to stop Catherine wheels too, as far as I'm concerned. I've, never seen, I've got to say, I've never seen a Catherine wheel at a ground. So maybe, maybe you could, next season, you, you open great. up a little cage and it's got a locust in it or whatever. Jumps, oh, well. on, jumps on the player taking the penalty. Quite clearly, that's already been a thing. Uh, anyway, well, cruel. It worked. The Van Hal's decision worked. Uh, cruel made two penalty saves, and the Dutch are through to the semi-final and as we mentioned previously they will face Argentina which sets up two very picturesque exciting kind of what you want finals you've got a European team taking on a semi-final sorry a European team taking on a South American team Brazil will face Germany and Argentina will face the Dutch oh. I'm excited for them I'm, I'm very excited which one are you more excited about? Ooh, probably Germany Brazil just because yeah. I think that's I don't want to say it's the bigger game, but I feel like there is more riding on it. I kind of want to see an all, a South American final, I've got to be honest. I'm a bit yeah, bored I, of the European final, so a South American final in South America is what I'm hoping for. It, it's not just that it's a South American final, it's Brazil versus Argentina. Yeah. It's, Mes, it's Messi versus Brazil, which would be... like Either way then, you're going to have Lionel Messi crowning his kind of achievements in world football... Um, or you're going to have Brazil winning their home nations World Cup, and it's just going to be incredible. That said, I think I said it before. I think Germany are a clear favourite to win the tournament at this point, and that's not something I think we've had previously. But I think at this point, and I wouldn't have said this unless Neymar was out. Actually, I think Brazil and Germany would have had a very close game. I think now Neymar's out. I think Germany are yeah the clear favourite. Do you do you agree or do you I, think I do like, agree with that? I feel like we we have time to wait now, though, don't we? Which leads we us quite nicely that. into the common question today. We have a day off tomorrow from football. There's no football to be watched. We won't be <laughs> resting. Hopefully our recording doesn't fail this time on a rest day. Oh, so um, do you want to talk about the Twitter question of the day, Ben? Okay, the Twitter question was quite simple, really, but quite a lot of you got in touch, so thank you very much. The Twitter question was, what should we talk about tomorrow? So... Um, it's kind of open ended, isn't it? Like, yeah. if you've got anything you want to tell us to do that you're watching the show now, maybe you don't do the Twitter question. Maybe you're not one of those people who interact <laughs> with us. You're not one of those <laughs> th- th- those fine specimens of men who follow us on Twitter. If you're not already, make sure to follow us. And of course, you, you might be a fa- fine specimen of a female, for all I know. Um, right, Ben, what did people suggest for tomorrow over on the Twitters? Uh, a few people have suggested I won't read out names because there's quite a few of you suggested potential moves so a bit of transfer gossip for those people like in the World Cup currently playing or have played so that that's a potential thing we can maybe do uh, so Brand Flakes just said football just talk about football so we're not allowed to talk about stick insects well I'm sure we can get well, square actually, flags speaking of that Lee on the Twitter said films he's obviously a, sh- a keen listener to the show he knows we're partial to a bit of film chat 
Speaking of film, I watched Adventureland recently. Oh, good. Did you? I watched Anchorman 2 last night. Oh, what did you make of it? Well, loads of people have been slaying it, saying it's not as good as the original. I actually thought the one-liners were better. I just felt like it's the nostalgia of the first one. I kind I of felt like the, the second one had a little bit less of a structured plot, but I kind of felt like that suited the humour a lot more. All right, oh, good. Well, good. So anyway, what other think about, things? Think about seeing any other films in the future? No, uh, well, I, I, tonight I'm probably going to watch the Lego movie. Not oh, that wow, yet. that's... A, okay. Um, is, that, is that with a female or...? Yeah, it is actually. No way. And Rob. There's a few uh, people coming over, don't you worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. It's going to be one of those kind of nights. I was going to say... Oh, <laughs> um. <laughs> X-rated. Anyway, someone else said best work of 11 so far. We could do something like that. We could actually plan it, because during the Q&A, which failed in the recording, we kind of sat for 20 minutes going, oh, who, could have, who, who plays left-back this World Cup? And we kind actually, of bumbling around. We did get a question actually from. Please let me find it. Jacob asks, "Will we will we be continuing the show after the World Cup?" Now we did answer this, as I mentioned in our Q and A. Uh, Shall we just answer it now? Quite yes. frankly, yes, we will, and it'll probably be weekly. It will focus mainly on the Premier League, but we will try as hard as we can to look at other leagues as well, because uh, you know keeps it interesting, keeps it different. It does. So aside from that, World Cup stars, uh, Victor said. Yeah, like you mentioned, a few people said best 11s. A few of the confirmed transfers. Basically, this isn't really a question, because we're basically reading questions that don't have answers. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we'll we'll do one of these, probably. Or we will. We'll, we'll, we'll do a couple of these. We'll do a plethora of them. That sounds possible. We, actually, we, we could do some football film chat. Excellent. Right, get your favourite football film chats on Twitter. Tweet it at us, at For The Fan Show, or if you watch it on YouTube, um, For The Fan Show on YouTube. Leave it. Leave them down in the comments. Um, of course, you can leave your. I was going to say you can leave your predictions. There is nothing to predict. Predict I, how long we'll ramble about stuff tomorrow. Can I? Um, can I say a thank you to the listeners? You can. Listeners, it's me, Ben here. Uh, we've had, we hit quite a, quite a good milestone for podcast listens, didn't we, Jack? Recently, we did. A few days ago, we hit a hundred thousand listeners on iTunes in total. Yeah, so thank you so much. Obviously, that doesn't even encounter the, the YouTube views we get. So thank you so much for listening. It's been great. There's been loads of ratings on the show as well. And obviously, you're getting involved on Twitter. You'll take part in the question. No one's winning any bloody prizes because, once again, no one got it right. Um, you were pretty close, though. But let's face it, less games are coming. The chances are increasing. Well, I predicted 1-0 Belgium and then 0-0. Nil, nil. Well, yeah, but you're not eligible. Um, so well, it wasn't 1-0 <laughs> Belgium. I was yeah, close. And you got it wrong anyway. Uh <laughs> So yeah, so that's basically a thank you from me and Jack to the listeners. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, and I think that brings us to the end. It's a bit of a short show today because there's no games to look at. There is. There isn't. There is. There is. Is there? <laughs> I don't know. Where am I? Um, Sorry. Well, yeah. Jack. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the Wimbledon final today. If you're watching it, if not, oh, I don't blame okay. you. I'm not. Um, I am. If you're a stick insect enthusiast, what did I pronounce the thing right yesterday? If you're a flag enthusiast. What would you make a Switzerland square flag? Why is from it like me, that? From Ben and my co-host Jack, goodbye. I've got to stop this. I'm sorry. We'll see you tomorrow. We, Bye, everyone. Will we? we'll, I'm waving. You'll hear us tomorrow. You will. Unless the, unless the recording... <laughs> <laughs>